So in my video that came out on May 10th, it was a fantasy draft video. I mentioned that I was having liver surgery soon. I just found out yesterday as of recording this that that's happening 100%. It's going to be happening mid-June. So I wanted to go over why I'm getting it, what that means for the channel, everything like that. So let's just get right into it. So in 2018, I went to the hospital with stomach pains, got all these tests done, MRIs, stuff like that. They ended up telling me that the liver level was like abnormally high. And I was like, well, that's not good. How do I you know, fix that? What are we going to do? They're like, we don't want to keep you in the hospital for all this. Nothing that we have to stay in the hospital for. See a GI doctor as soon as possible. I'm like, all right, that works for me. So the next day, I'm calling all these places nearby, five minutes away, 10 minutes away, 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away, nothing. And I really, I shouldn't say nothing. They had appointments. Now, this was, I think it was July 4th, now that I remember it, because I went to a family party afterward. And they're like, the soonest we could do is the end of September. And I'm like, well, it's July 5th. That's really not going to work for me. So I start calling places 40 minutes away, 50 minutes away. Finally find a place, week later, hour away. Okay, we do that. I go there. She takes my blood. We talk about it, all that. Ends up telling me that it's kind of confusing. What she wants to do is get a liver biopsy. So my first liver biopsy, I think, was in September 2018, if I remember correctly. That sounds right in my head. The date doesn't really matter. Get one get the results back. And, you know, I'm nervous about this. Who knows what it could be? I'm reading online. Like it could be cancer, stuff like that. Nothing like that. She just comes back. She goes, I can't really find anything with the biopsy. It's somewhat normal. It could just be a fatty liver. I'm like, all right. She's like, we'll just keep doing blood. If it's still a problem, a few months, we'll do a liver biopsy a different way. The way I got it the first time was like through your right side, which is unfortunate because after that you have to lay on your side for like four hours, which is awful, completely awful. So we go by, we're getting the blood worth, all that. Come back in a few months. She's like, yeah, can't figure it out. I want to go in, do another biopsy of another part of your liver so we can test that out. So the other one, you go down your throat and through your stomach, which is a little bit better. Don't have to lay on your side. You can leave right after it happens. So we did that, get the results back normal. So she's like, the only thing we can really do at this time, other than get like MRIs, which I was getting every few months, which I'm still getting every few months. She's like, we'll just keep doing blood. If it's going, like, it's starting to go down a little bit, but, like, if I could show you my chart, which I can't right now, say, like, the bottom, like, say, like, zero was normal, and then, like, let's say 20 was, like, normal high, mine were, like, let's say 20 was normal high, mine was, like, 80, which is, like, super, super high, and she's, like, it's nothing that's, like, affecting your body, like, it's not causing your stomach pain, stuff like that, the stomach pain was just something completely different, they just found the liver levels by just doing tests, trying to figure out what was going on just in case it was the liver. So I'm like, all right. So the next year I ended up getting uh, ulcerative colitis, which is something completely different with your colon when that's inflamed. I ended up getting two, what did I get? Two colonoscopies in 2019, I believe it was. Ended up getting another liver biopsy through the, down the side or through my mouth. I don't remember exactly what it was that time, but just kept being like, we think it's normal. Like the levels are starting to dip a little bit. That's good. Nothing like really high ever. Like it's still high. Don't get me wrong, but nothing like super, super high. Like I was just saying. So I'm like, okay, keep doing blood work every few months. Keep getting MRIs, all that. And this is like two, end of 2000, must be 2000. No, not 19. I think we're into 2020. Haven't had anything in a while. I'm getting IV infusions for my uh, ulcerative colitis, which isn't that bad. Was doing two hour IV infusions, which were awful. Now they're about 30, 45 minutes, which is perfectly fine. I can deal with that. Not a big deal. So we're in 2020. The levels are starting to go up again. And she's like, this is what we're going to have to do. I know a doctor that's at like a liver specialist doctor, not just a GI, which is just like all your gastro stuff, all your stomach issues, things like that. She's like, I know a liver specialist at like the best hospital uh, in Massachusetts. And I'm like, all right. She's like, if your uh, insurance will cover that, we'll have you go there. It does. I go there. First thing he wants to do, blood work, MRI every few months. Yeah, yeah, because he wants to get like his own base level at the hospital, which is perfectly fine. So we get a base level and he goes, when was this in 2020? It must have been, let's say I went to him in 2020, like June or July. So that's like two years into all this problem. Nothing really found out. No pain, not affecting my body, not a huge deal. So this must be, I see him in June, must be, let's say October, November. 2020 he goes i think i'm gonna want to do liver surgery where they'll go inside they'll cut out because what what it is on my liver is not it's not a growth but it's like i guess it's kind of is a growth if we're being technical but like there's something on my liver that's not cancerous they've checked that 
had so many MRI. Or I had another liver biopsy with this guy at the better hospital. MRI, stuff like that. It's not growing, nothing like that. I'm getting MRIs every like two months at this point. I have another one. If I didn't have the surgery plan, I would have another one in June, I think it is. Maybe the end of June, beginning of July, something like that. And he goes in like October, November, like I'm saying, I think I want to have liver surgery. We'll cut that out. You'll be out of work for a month. All this. Or the other option is we just keep doing MRIs. We keep like watching it, blah, 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 blah. And I go, well, I'm, at that point was this 2020. I'm like, I'm 30. I don't have a family. I don't have kids. Like I can afford, I, I don't own my, own my own house, anything like that. I'm like, I can afford to take time off and it's not going to be like affecting my family, my kids. I don't have tons of bills to pay. I do have bills to pay, but nothing crazy. I'm like, I'd rather do that. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's do that and just be done with it. And he's like, all right, all right, let me talk to the surgeon. We'll see what like the best course of action is, all that. So I'm like, all right, we're going to be doing this. Like I'm thinking of like, like how it's going to affect me, stuff like that, looking it up online. And then probably two to three days later, he calls me and he's like, he's like, it's not that the surgery is dangerous per se, but since it is like liver surgery, they're cutting something out. It's considered a major surgery, even though it's very safe, nothing like that. He's like, I'd feel confident if we wait another like half a year, something like that. And then we like, you keep getting MRIs, you keep getting blood work. And then we'll like, we'll look at it again. We'll talk about it again. All that he's showing like my liver MRIs, the blood work to, they have like weekly, like tumor meetings and liver meetings and stuff like that at the hospital. He's saying he's showing to it. Everyone doesn't seem too concerned about it. So I'm like, whatever I can do MRIs. Like they suck. Don't get me wrong. They're like an hour. They suck. Not a big deal. I'll do it. I'll do it. Blood work, whatever. So then we get to, when did I find out that I might be getting liver surgery? Probably we're May. So it must've been end of March. He calls me and he's like, all right, you're going to have an appointment in this. And I'm like, all right, appointments, whatever typical appointments I go. And he's like, I'm pretty sure we're going to have you have that liver surgery. I'm like, that's perfect. I'll do that surgery. Blah, 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 blah. We go over it. And he's like, all right, you're going to meet with this person. And then uh, your, my secretary will ever call you. My office will set up a time. So that was yesterday. I went in and met with their surgeon and she's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go They cut like three holes in my body, go on with like robot arms, cut it out. And then they make like a bigger part of my body, take out the part of the liver. It's like a smaller part of the liver. The thing with liver, if you don't know this, I'm sure maybe you guys do, maybe you don't, is that your liver doesn't grow back per se, but it like inflates to make up for the points, uh, the portions that you're missing. So I'm not getting like my whole liver out. If that, that can't happen, I'd have to get like a liver transplant, which I'm not doing because then your like life expectancy is very low. So I'm, not, I'm glad we're not doing that. But yeah, that's going to be in sometime in June. I'm like, I'll do that. I'm like, what does that entail? They're like, you'll be in the hospital for three to four days. The surgery is going to be three hours, which is kind of crazy. But whatever, I'll be under. Not a big deal. The worst part is I'm getting a, um, what is it called? Catheter, I believe it's called. If you don't know what that is, look it up or don't look it up. Just know that it's not a, not a pleasant thing. I guess is the best way to put it. So I'm getting that sometime in June. I'm going to have a month off from work minimum. But I can't like drive. I can't really do anything. It's mostly just going to be like not bed rest per se, but like I can't go out really. I can't really do anything. I'm just going to be sitting inside mostly playing Xbox. So what bases this whole thing to saying is that in the month of the end of June, probably most of July, and I'm hoping Madden 22 comes out at the end of July, that it'll be mostly shorter videos. I have, I have an idea for a series that I want to do that are shorter videos, but I have to test it out. That will be coming out probably next week, the idea that I have. So look out for that. You'll notice it. I'm going to talk about it at the beginning of the video. But we're talking like fantasy drafts. We're talking speed rebuilds. We're talking superstar KO. There'll probably be, I'm aiming, aiming to have two realistic rebuilds a week because I do want to get through all the teams before Madden 22 comes out because I'm hoping that game's completely different. I won't hold my breath, but I'm hoping it's different and they'll be able to start again, maybe with different mechanics, stuff like that. Really hoping for that, but yeah, that's going to be the plan for that. And then along with that, that just happened this past weekend. So on, let's pull up a calendar really quickly. I got my first COVID shot. Uh, let's see, 7th. I must have got it on April 16th, let's say, or 9th, one of those days. And they're like, on uh, May 7th, you come for your second shot. I'm like, all right, that's fine by me. So I get it that day. You hear like all the time the second shot makes you sick and stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to stream on the 8th, probably not on the 9th. Not a huge deal, but I know the surgery's coming, so I'm like, we're going to have to figure out exactly when I could sit down, record ahead of time, because I am having the surgery, more than likely at that point. And then I wake up on May 8th. Now, typically what I do on Saturdays, 
if I'm not sick from COVID shots, is I'll wake up at like eight. And recently my grandparents are moving who live right down the street from me. And I'm the only like guy, grandchild they have. So like I have to help them move and stuff like that. But usually what I've been doing recently, wake up at eight, you know, wake up, eat some breakfast, take a shower, go help them, like grab a piece of furniture or two, bring it to somebody's house that they're giving it away to, and then come here on the street. So I wake up, I'm sick. I wake up at six in the uh, morning. That sucks. I'm looking online. Where can I get Tylenol? CVS is closed. Stop and shop is closed until a certain time. Like, all right, I guess I'll just deal with it until those times. I leave my house at 730 and I live with my dad. I should mention I leave at 730. He's already leaves to work at six on Saturday. So I leave at 730, go to stop and shop, get Tylenol, get some other stuff, NyQuil, stuff like that. Get back to the house at eight. And then he's backing into his spot. Now we live in an apartment and he doesn't on Saturdays come home until like 10 or 11. So we get out of the car at the same time. And I'm like, why are you home? Just shrugs at me. Not a huge deal. Just like sometimes he comes home early. Not that often, but sometimes, whatever. Go inside. Probably like an hour later, somebody, I work with my dad. Somebody at my work goes, you need to check on your dad. He was acting very strange. Now back in 2017, he had a stroke where he couldn't talk. Or he could talk, but it was just all slurring. So he can make noise, I guess is the best way to put it. He can make noise. So I go out there and they're like, you need to check on your dad. He was acting strange. My dad's one of those type of people that just isn't going to go to doctors, isn't going to go to the hospital unless he's like forced to. And my parents are divorced, so he doesn't have like a nagging wife or I shouldn't say nagging, but like a wife that's going to be like, all right, we're going. Because that's typically what like, typically in my experience in my family, that's what it takes with people. So I go out there and I'm like, I just got a text. Are you all right? And he just goes, basically just straight for I go, okay, we're going to the hospital. And he goes, no, we're not. No, he didn't say no. He goes, I go, yeah, we are. And we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I'm basically like crying, being like, no, we're going to the hospital right now. And he's like, and I'm like, who do I have to call? My, my, his, his ex-wife, my grandparents or my grandmother, my, my aunt, who's like his dad or her, his dad, her husband just died of a stroke last year. It was his best friend. I'm like, do I have to call these people to get you to go? He's like, whatever, we'll go. He didn't say whatever, but he's like, all right, we'll go. So just a few days ago, my dad had a stroke. He's fine. It's not a big deal. I mean, any stroke's a big deal, but he's already out of the hospital. That's fine. So the whole point of that story is if he goes back to work, which I think he will end up going back to work, when I get out of the hospital, not like the first week, because like I said, three to four days in the hospital, probably the week after that, I'm going to be kind of down in pain, stuff like that. But I think the week after, if my dad's not home, because I rent an office to record stream stuff like that if he's not home i am gonna plan on streaming it's not gonna be madden it might be nfl head coach i have an idea where if he's not home i'll stream one game a day monday through friday but then most of the time it's gonna be other games i'll play with my buddies who don't like i have a buddy who gambles full time i'll play with him all the time call of duty whatever games we feel like playing but uh i think that's everything i wanted to address let's see let me pull up my notes that down Liver surgery, time off, videos, stream after surgery, dad stroke. Yeah. So I think that's everything. So like I said, video is going to be somewhat shorter. I'm going to aim for realistic rebuilds at least twice, at least once a week, but I'm aiming for twice a week. Um, Then stream after, like if I'm feeling up to it, if my dad's on home after surgery. So I hope you guys understand, but I appreciate all your support. I'm sure you guys will understand, but I wanted to let you guys know before that happens. And I kind of just dropped it just randomly in a fantasy draft video, but I do feel bad doing the shorter videos, but it's better than no videos. I guess is the best way to put it. And I don't have a ton of time to sit down and record like realistic rebuilds day in and day out a month and a half ahead of time. If that makes sense or not a month ahead of time for a month and a half in the future. I, I, I think you, you get what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that's everything. Uh, if you guys want to support me at all, go to patreoncom slash headstrong gaming link will be down in the description. I'd appreciate that. Uh, if you want to go to Twitch, you can say, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You could support me there. Either if you have Amazon Prime, you could sub for free. You could sub there anyways. I'd appreciate any and all support. But um, yeah, I think that's it. If you also want to join my Discord, link down in the description. And I will see you guys, I don't know, later. There's going to be videos every single day. I will not be missing videos. That's a promise. What I like in my people that I watch online is that they're daily. That just It just means a lot to me. I know I like leaving work going home, opening up YouTube, and I see my favorite creators have uploaded. And I'm like, all right, I got a good 10, 20, 30, 40-minute video. 
that I could look forward to watching each and every day. So, yeah, I think I covered everything. I'm pretty sure I'm good. All right, I'll see you next time.